Friday, October 4th. I don't know what October 4th kind of has meaning, but it's Friday. Everybody should be happy it's Friday, unless those people like me who work on Saturdays because I got the paid newsletter, so I spend all morning writing, usually just cleaning up what I've uh, written throughout the week in the um, in the, the paid newsletter. So uh, we're going to go over everything. I got port strike stuff. I got jobs numbers. I got the VIX in election years. I got EV go up 50% yesterday. PSIX, you know that's the top quant, stock quant. Stop quant. <laughs> top stock quant. I don't even know what I was trying to say. But Rivian production cuts, that one's down huge. Altimeter uh, capital. We got China. We got oil. We got Bitcoin. We got the top uh, stock. Five stocks that hit all-time highs yesterday that you should know about. Um, top 10 growth stocks in October. Um, a good screen uh, from, from Seeking Alpha. I'll show you how, how to build a screen for dividends, things like that. And we'll talk about a great social request from uh, Josh about losses and why you should cut them or not cut them, blah, blah, blah. So we'll go over all of that, okay? Uh, first off, here's the cues. Now, in pre-market, we're up 1.3. The jobs numbers just came out. So we'll take a look at this story. Non-farm payrolls roar back in September. Unemployment rate slips to 4.1. We're in a market where good news is good news. The job market is strong. Inflation is coming down. Uh, employment stays strong through inflation coming down. That's what is the definition of a soft landing. A soft landing. And that would be a phenomenal phenomenal feat you will hear fear mongers out there you will hear everybody start screaming i got a bunch of people sending me some uh some this dude with like a long beard with his hat on backward from instagram saying that the economy is the worst ever and it's going to crash it's bringing problems f you we're making money you're in a bull market until you're not and so all of those people that are trying to scare you show them a quarterly chart of the cues just show them a quarterly chart of the cues because if you've invested at all time highs throughout this entire, what, 20 years or 15, 20 years, somewhere in that name, even if you invested at the all time highs here in 2001, 23 years ago, okay, the cues, the all time high here was 69. You're at 487. Go ahead. T tell me that the economy's crashing. We're in a bull market until we're not. Now, doesn't mean it's going to stay like this forever, but you can. we're in a bull market until we're not. Again, a soft landing would be positive. I am expecting some volatility. We'll go over some of that stuff, but I am expecting that this won't last. We're going to see some pullbacks. Today's a good day. If you wanted to buy on a Friday and dollar cost average your way in, have at it. But the, the non-farm payrolls roars back. Other big news of the day, the port strike ends, okay? They agree to 62%. You want to know why it ends? Because this dude, okay, Mr. Soprano himself, we found out he makes 900 k a year. We find out that he drives a Bentley convertible, and this is his multi-million dollar house along with his $20 million yacht that he owns. That's why it ended. This dude didn't want to put it on, you know, push it to any more extent. They got what they wanted. Boom, it gets out there, so... You know, again, they were fighting for something justifiable that they don't want to lose their jobs to automation, that they want a little bit more. They make a lot of money. They make a lot of money. The ports make a lot of money. But again, I think that's what it is. Now, volatility in election years. The VIX. We talk about the VIX all the time. I say the VIX likes to live at 20 because that's the average where it's at. The VIX has never been read. During an October of an election year with an average return of 24%. Okay, let's go look at the VIX because we saw that spike on August 5th with the J Japan unwind trade. Okay, we're at 18. We're down 7% today. You want to know why? Jobs numbers were good. That's why you're down 7%. 
We go up 24% from here. You're over 20. It will go up. We'll see continued volatility. You will continue to see QQQ on the short term trade within this range. The VIX just wants to live at 20. Now, it doesn't mean that it can't go down to 10. We can go over the one month here. Look at this one. You can see it down here at 16 and 15. The 52-week range is 11.52 to 65. 65 was August 5th where it spiked. The day range yesterday, 18 to 20. You know, it spiked up to 20.48. So the VIX in election years has never been negative. Meaning, again, when the VIX goes up, typically the market goes down. Uh, Hyper volatility means that the market will lose. That's typically what it means. And it's been, you know, again, volatility is on the menu. Doesn't mean that it's absolutely going to come. This could be the October, just like last September. It wasn't likely that we were going to wind up positive just from a seasonality standpoint. This one, you know, at 35 years, this goes back, by the way. So expect volatility. You want to know what's volatile? EV go. <laughs> it was up 60% yesterday uh, on a Department of Energy loan guarantee to expand EV charging. Okay, they guaranteed EV Go will actually get money. I am an EV owner. I have never charged at an EV Go station. This is for me. This is nothing more than an absolute just run up. Short interest twenty four percent. This is shorts getting covered. They're not making money. Their growth eighty two percent revenue year over year. When you make five dollars. And, and you know one one quarter or yet one year and then you make ten dollars the next year it's a hundred percent increase in, in revenue it's not hard if you go over to the financials what are they making 206 million that's not hard i mean that you know the, the, if you're getting loans and things of that sort and you put stuff out there it's not hard again valuation growth that's the only thing profitability what do they make gross profit margin 27 percent. there's no pricing power none None. Momentum, A+. Plus. It's been it's been a crazy good stock. I would argue it's being held up by short interest. That's it. Revisions, two up on, on revenue, on earnings per share, four down. Okay, there's only six that cover this. If we go to Wall Street and we say, okay, what's the average price target? $5.24, 17% downside. Do not get FOMO. Okay, this is just one that if you were in it yesterday, fantastic. Trade it on a shortened time frame. <clears throat> you know, that's the thing. When you get something like this, you want to trade it on a shortened time frame. I have my four-hour algorithm, but maybe you want the 65-minute algorithm because the 65-minute algorithm actually will trade this one pretty well. Let's see, okay? Yesterday, if you had traded on the 65-minute algorithm, you got in at $5.51. You're up at $6.33. That's great. It got you in at $3.94 before the big uh, pump. You made 28% yesterday. That's a fantastic. That's within 65 minutes. It got you in on one candle, got you out the next. That's a great, great. Again, the algorithm over eight months makes you 271% on this one. 222% is what you make if you bought eight months ago. That is a phenomenal return on a stock that's not making money that, in my mind, has absolutely no goal of actually becoming a viable company. Chargers? Are you kidding me? They're going to charge the rate of electricity. That's it. So I I don't like this one. I hate it. Uh, I'm not a fan whatsoever. I think Tesla actually makes the the the, the network much better. EVgo, you know who's who's installing EVgo software in their car for their car to guide them to to that charger? Not Ford, not GM. They may put it in there, but then you get there and it's freaking down because you don't have an active network. That's what Tesla has. If if a Tesla charger goes down, I know it in my car that it's down because it's an active network. All these other charging networks, not active. They're crap. They're crap. But again, trade this one. 65-minute algorithm makes you a lot of money on this one. It's a fantastic trade. You can trade it. I like that one. But we can talk about that one. Now, another one 
that's got some uh, crazy volatility is Rivian. I have said it before. I think it's a $30 pump stock. They slide after cutting its production forecast due to parts shortage. This is any reaction in the market is an overreaction. I think they cut their production because they can't sell $100,000 vehicles. That's just my opinion. But again, you know, the market for a $100,000 EV, they're they're losing, what, $30,000 every EV that they sell? They have tons of money. Don't worry about the money. They may dilute you every now and then, but don't worry about that. Short interest, 11%. The other one had, what, 30%, close to 30 So we can look at Wall Street. There's plenty of people that cover this, 27 analysts. They say the stock price, average stock price is $17.53. They've chased it down. This is, again, one that you want to trade. And, and we can go look at the, the chart on this one. Rivian, uh, you can see the slide down on the four-hour algorithm. The four-hour algorithm loses you 33% over two years. That's great because if you bought and held, you're down 68%. It keeps you out of those huge downturns. Now, let's look at the 65-minute algorithm. Let's see how this one performs. You make 12%, 12.8% over eight months. That's not bad. I mean, you know, that's a six, you know, what, 12.8%? You'd take that in a year? It's over eight months. You know what you made if you eight months ago, if you bought this and held it? 28.4% loss. So find the way that you want to trade. A strategy is a good strategy. If you find a stock that is upper left to bottom right, we can just go on the weekly here. This is upper left to bottom right personified. Okay, it's got some pumps in there. And yes, I think it's a $30 stock on a pump. But this is ultimately upper left to bottom right. Trade it on a short time frame, like the 65 minute. Develop your skills. And you may say, well, how do I get that four hour uh, algorithm? How do I get that 65 minute algorithm? Well, it's in the theme song. Sign up for the newsletter or go to the link tree. The link is down below. It is below my head every day on this podcast. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Daily Stock Pick. It's this top link. It's TrendSpider, okay? TrendSpider takes you to this page. It's 53 bucks a month, okay? If you have advanced in your budget for $223 a month, I would urge you to sign up for that if you're new to trading. The reason? Unlimited one-on-one training from TrendSpider. Unlimited one on, uh, uh, let me reiterate, unlimited. How much do you pay for a course? Okay, not $223. You you pay probably $2,000 for a course. You get a full year of one-on-one training where you get to ask questions. Okay, not just watch a video. You get to ask questions of somebody who's an expert at the software. They can't tell you buy this one or sell this one. They can help you set up strategies. You may say, hey, I want a strategy where if a stock dips 10% uh, it, within a certain amount of time frame, I want to buy it. Because we all know Tom Lee, if you bought 10% off the queues every time it dipped 10% within a week or so and, and just bought it, you've made a ton of money. You've beaten the index because it dipped 10%. And then it's probably up 20% over the next like four weeks or so. But again, they can guide you in those strategies. They can guide you in, hey, how do I find stocks like EVGO that were up 50% yesterday so that I can short them or buy puts or do whatever I want to do? They can help set that strategy up with you. Again, unlimited one-on-one training. If you can do it yourself or you just want to learn it yourself, again, the standard, I give you the leg up because I give you the four-hour algorithm, the 65-minute algorithm. I give you all my scans, all of the alerts. Everything that I give you is what I use personally, okay? So the first thing you do is you go over to the link tree. You sign up for TrendSpider. Then you're going to go to this email address, and people have been missing this. Full disclosure, people have been missing this part. And I know you don't listen to every to every um, every episode. But one thing you should take with you, if you sign up for TrendSpider, you need to email me. The reason is there's a privacy uh, expectation because you're signing up for TrendSpider. You're not signing up for something from me. As signing up for it and as an affiliate, I want to give you a leg up. I want to give you the four-hour algorithm. I want to give you those things. But you have to email me because the relationship is between you and TrendSpider. The relationship with the strategies, that's through me. So you just email me. But again, find the strategy that works for you. That's what you want to find. We're going to look at this four-hour. We're going to run this one again. Again, the four-hour algorithm on, on, on Rivian, it loses you 33%. Now we can look at another one. If we go over here, uh, we were just looking at the VIX. 
and you look at seeking alpha premium, th this has been a great find. Again, top rated stocks, the top rated uh, stock in the, the, the quant because Seeking Alpha Premium, it's the second link on Linktree. We're going to go over this because I'm going to show you this one stock, okay? Seeking Alpha Premium, you save $30 and a free seven-day trial. So you can try it. Go over here and you go to Seeking Alpha and you go to the top stocks. This PSIX, it has been a top-rated stock for a while. And uh, some people in the private Facebook group that I have brought it up and they've been trading it since like $10, $8. It's at $20, okay? And you may say, well, how does the quant know that? It's five factors, valuation, growth, profitability, momentum, and revision, okay? How long has this one been a strong buy? You can see it down here. At $4, it was a strong buy. At $4, just happens to be three fours, $4.44. You're at $20.65. Let's use our other tool, PSIX. Um, our other tool is um, TrendSpider, and let's take a look at this because I've identified, I've gone back and I've looked at this, and I've identified things that could be done. Now, over 31 months, because this is, is a brand new stock, over 31 months, uh, this this makes you 36.9%. Um, if you, you know, it's what, 30 positions, so one a month? 598% is what you made buying and holding this one. But let's take a look at the weekly, okay? I want to take a look at the weekly because I've identified those yellow lines right there. How did I identify those yellow lines? Well, it's part of charting. And this is why if you don't know this stuff, you can take a, the one, unlimited one-on-one -on -one courses with TrendSpider. They'll help you, guide you. You know, they, they might tell you, hey, how do I find uh, support and resistance? Well, previous times where it's pumped up and then pulled back, that's called resistance. If it's held there and you see it on the bottom, that's called support. I identified previous resistance. So when I noticed this back in October, or, or let's see, PSIX was, let's see, we'll bring it back here. Uh, this was May, uh, May 15th. May 15th, let's take a look at May 15th, okay? We're gonna go to May 15th, It right down here. Uh, April, May, do, 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 May 6th. It got started to get a pump up. High was three dollars and fifty four cents. Okay, May twentieth, high was four dollars and sixty six cents. So people started noticing it there. Now the RSI was at seventy one. Doesn't mean it can't go down. It did go down. The stock price went up. You had divergence right there. Your MACD started to take off. Your volume increasing. How did I know that twenty? Well, look at this one way back in two thousand sixteen. It pumped up, pulled back. How did I know that twelve? It pulled uh, pulled back, pump, pumped up, and then pulled back. You could put some here at 10, but that $8 one had two times where it pumped up, pulled back, pumped up, pulled back. You could have put here at, at $3, pumped up, pulled back. Now, it's all the way at 20. Where are we going? My guess, again, your guess is as good as mine, but if you go over here to Wall Street, there's one person that covers it. They say it's worth $22. So, would I get into this one now? No. And the reason is because you're seeing, look at the price here, okay, on the weekly. Look at the price. Hit that $20 and come down. Double top. You want this to turn into support. So you want to see it pull back when it gets over 20 and use 20 as its support. Right now, I would say your stop loss would be at 12. If you bought at 20, your stop loss would be at 12. Do not put a lot of money in there. But this is how you use Seeking Alpha. You go and look at those tools. Look at look at the top stocks. I like that one. Uh, you know, again, I like it. So PSIX. Now, Brad Gerstner, who is the CEO, I think he's the CEO of Altimeter Investing. Uh, this is, a, you know, when you read this stuff, you say, okay, you know, great. How did you know this stuff? This is a, just a blueprint for how you probably should think about things. Because if you're stock picking, you don't necessarily want to pick a winner. You know, what, what's Brad Gerstner doing? Altimeter is happy to invest in both OpenAI and G-Lean, okay, they, and Perplexity. Those are three AI companies that were out there on the private market that they invested in. We also own Meta, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, who are competing with those three. We also own Tesla and SpaceX and a huge believer in Elon Musk. Great founders and companies win or lose on the field. That's the key. 
And and when I read this, I said he's showing you a blueprint. You don't have to pick one winner. You want to invest where the puck is, you know, where the, not where the puck is, where it's going to, and it's going to AI. And so essentially, he's saying we've laid our groundwork with investments in these companies. And if one of them works out, that's great. You don't have to pick the actual winner. So I, I thought that was great. I thought that was fantastic. Now, what's not helpful? Kathy Woods back in uh, four years ago said she thought that Tesla would hit $15,000 per share. I mean, she was right on so many things. But again, she's the Tom Lee. She is the Michael Burry. She is the uh, Bill, uh, Bill Ackman. She is just like those guys. They get out there and they make crazy claims. The one who doesn't make crazy claims is, is Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett has never been a hype man. Warren Buffett has been, hey, it just makes sense. Dude doesn't use a computer. He still writes his freaking notes out uh, by hand. Well, I guess he does it now. It's, he's 100 years old. So I'm not sure exactly what he's doing, but he's the greatest investor of all time. Tesla, great, great pick by Kathy Woods. Because when you look at this, she was way back here. I mean, she was saying way back here in 2016, he's going to do this. They started investing way back here. Okay. That run up in 2018, I will tell you that I just said live on YouTube. I think this 2018 run may be what we're seeing now in Palantir because the valuation did not matter during this, this run. The valuation today in Palantir doesn't seem to matter. So again, this doesn't help, but I think Tesla is a great one. Altimeter is an investor. I do think with the RoboTaxi event coming up next week, I think it's interesting. Their CIO left, um, you know, right before the RoboTaxi. I have full self-driving. I've said it before. I'm not super impressed by it. I don't know what they're going to come out with. It should be interesting, but I think that that you know that that 260 provides you a, a good area of support. I think 200. Uh, I'm sorry, 260 is your resistance. I think 200 is your support. I think you're going to see a, a sell the news kind of event next week. That's just my take on it. But crazy claims like that don't help. Now, uh, China. I said it yesterday. Yesterday's pullback was a gift, absolute gift. Buy it. It's up 3% today, FXI. Okay, BABA. We can go and look at BABA. BABA was down yesterday. You see some red candles. It's up 3% today. Would I buy it here? I probably wouldn't. Honestly, that 120 is kind of a resistance level. If you're dying to get into a Chinese stock, BABA might be one that I would look into. FXI is the ETF that I like for that one because it buys the Hong Kong shares. Um, but China was one. I also said yesterday, you should be trading UCO on the 65-minute because of the volatility that the Israel Israeli-Iran uh, situation runs. Well, what did I say that yesterday morning? 26. We're 28.75. Nice 10% gain. Nice 10% gain for you. You know, th this algorithm, uh, 65 minute over eight months in oil, UCO, UCO, you cat open. Okay. That, for those people who can't read on the screen, you cat open. This is a triple levered ETF on Bloomberg crude oil futures. Okay. It, it, it does move a lot. You have a golden cross potentially coming. But understand this is a decaying asset. You don't want to just buy and hold this one because it's a decaying asset. The 200 days negative, the 50 days negative on the weekly. You do have a gap up here at 53. Do not expect it to get to 53 because oil would have to go from 70 to 150. Do I see oil going to 150? No, I don't. I see it going to $100 a barrel. And that's still a good move today because it's selling at about 70 bucks a barrel. Let's go to Finviz and let's look at oil. Okay, crude oil is selling at 74.25. That's where it's selling. So if you want to trade it on the 65 minute, it's a great tool. Again, find the tool that works for you. The four hour on UCO, it, it loses you 14%. You make 7% if you just bought and held it 24 months ago. So again, I said it yesterday. I thought that was a good one. Another good one. IBIT, we, we talked about Bitcoin. It dipped under 60,000 yesterday. IBIT, algorithm got you out. The algorithm makes you 3%. Buying and holding this one over eight months makes you 23%. Because remember, it just debuted eight months ago. 
Nine positions, so about once per month. Your average win is 9.8. So if you want to wait for it, you can wait for it. Today it's at 35. It's up 1%. You know, I, I like that one, and I like MicroStrategy. I like MSTR because MSTR is just a leveraged ETF on, on Bitcoin because all he does is buy Bitcoin and hold it. And we can look at the last 13 years of MicroStrategy. October, you're up 71% of the time. Mean change, 8%. October for November, up 62% of the time, mean change 7.8. We talked about October with Bitcoin. It's usually pretty positive. I think it's 100 times, uh, 100%. Now, stocks that hit an all-time yesterday, T-Mobile, TMUS, this one, bottom left, upper right. Algorithm got you in at 201. So you're at 208 right now. Is it too late to get in? Probably a little bit, a, a, a little bit extended. Aflac, insurance. This is reinsurance, I think it was is what it's called. Uh, one ten, but it hit an all time high at one thirteen. Uh, ADP, which is the uh, the the payroll processor, all time high, two seventy nine. VST, which is uh, electric, down in Texas, I believe. This is the biggest gainer in the S and P year to date. Okay, the algorithm makes you three hundred six percent at eighty. Should have gotten in. Again, algorithm provides you the entry. Your average win on this, 34.71%. Would I get in here? Probably not. Is it is it uh, you know, a crazy valuation? We can look at VST. We can look at VST as far as the, the, the Wall Street. They, the 12 analysts, $129 price target. Okay, am I getting in at 132? No. I mean, they were up 5%. In pre-market, they're at 134. It's 1.43%. Momentum is the strongest force in a market. Now, short interest is only 3.96. So let's look at the valuation because it's not the short interest pulling it up. They're not making money, but they're forward. They will make money. Their forward PE is 24. That's hugely expensive. You know, This is a utility. Remember, this is a utility. So when you look at their growth, they're it, their growth minus 15% year over year. Their expected growth, 11%. So they have to continue growing. When you look at the valuation and you look at the peg ratio... Let's see. They don't have a peg ratio, so they don't put some, some stuff forward, but they're expected to grow that amount. Profitability, 34%. I don't know what the, you know, what, what the, the crazy good look on this one is, but it, it just, you know, momentum is the strongest force in this market. So again, summary, VST is the biggest one. Now, another one that hit that you should absolutely have in your portfolio uh, is Meta. Meta hit an all-time high yesterday, okay? It is a solid, solid stock. What, two months ago, maybe three months ago, I was saying, hey, buy this one under $500 because it makes sense to get this one under $500. The algorithm makes you 185%. If you just bought and held this one, you've made 331%, okay? The algorithm got you in here September 11th. Here, July, under $500, just buy it. Just buy it. You go and you look at a weekly on this one, and it's this crazy, crazy up. We talked about 540 being a resistance. That may be the support now. They are making a ton of money, a ton of money, and it hit an all-time high yesterday, and it's up 0.39% today. So, um, yeah, yeah. Keep keep on uh, do it. Look at that one. Now we're going to look at a couple of things. Bank of America's top ten stock gro uh, growth. The criteria again. I want to point out the criteria. The criteria to be included in this list: Bank of America versus earnings per share surprise rating of one, a buy rating opinion, and the high, highest uh, five year projected earnings per sh per share growth rate. The annual performance for the growth ten stocks that you see here uh, so far this year is twenty nine percent versus twenty eight percent for the S and P. Okay, there's the 10 stocks uh, down below. It's uh, ba, ba, ba. Allstate, Dow, Alphabet, Netflix, Meta, Progressive, Take-Two, Uber. You can read more about it, but I, I think this one points out, hey, it's great to do scans like this. The criteria, you can set this up in, in uh, the stock screener right here. You can go over uh, to, to Seeking Alpha and, and just use a stock screener and put that in there. Now, Wells Fargo, they put in their core uh, th this is their core stocks. They include, uh, let's see, includes Google, Comcast, Walt Disney, Omnicore. Again, it's it's broken up by sector, 
And so they put their, this is their core portfolio. I have my core portfolio. This is Wells Fargo core portfolio. You should have your core portfolio set. Now, 10 dividend stocks for stability and safety. Maybe you're Walter and you want income. I wouldn't set it up this way. But dividend investing is always top of mind for investors that are in search for more stability and safety in their portfolios. As a result, Seeking Alpha highlighted 10 strong dividend stocks that may appear. For reference, and this is how you set it up. For reference, the stock that the screener that was used to identify the following stocks were U.S. stocks with $10 billion in uh, market cap, dividend and yield of 3% or higher. Moreover, each stock had to have Seeking Alpha metrics are listed as buy or strong buy. The list is ranked by Seeking Alpha Quant ratings. Okay. Ironically, ironically, number three is MPLX, which is in our core portfolio. It's a fantastic stock. It's a fantastic, absolutely fantastic stock. Let's talk about social requests. This was a great request from Josh. Okay. Josh from Spotify asked, hey, Gary, I was sharing that I ended up cutting two of my biggest losers about a month ago with a few friends, and they simply struggled to comprehend why. I wouldn't just hold on to stocks since I was down uh, 80% and 65%. I tried explaining that we're at all-time highs and that these stocks were just flyers from COVID and I'd rather take my 20 and 35% uh, of the original investment and invest in mega caps. Wondering if you could share some stories of your biggest losers and moves you made with what you were able to recuperate. And and this is a great, I, I said, hey, Baba, great example, okay? Uh, Baba is one if we look at a weekly stock, I think I may have this one in here. Do I have a, it on monthly? I may have wiped it out. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I probably wiped it out. I, I forget when I bought this one, but I know I bought it somewhere in the 2020 run-up um, right after the, the the COVID stuff. I think I may have bought it around $200. This one ran up all the way to 310 okay? I sold it, I think, at $100. Now, it's back at 114 today. I sold that one back then. Uh, did I look back? No. I have probably taken my money and made... This one got all the way down to 65, okay? When you see a slide like that, coming back, remember, in order to make back a 50% loss, you need to have a 100% gain. Another one that I, I, I lost on, that, that I'm glad I got out of, Sedge, Sedge, and we can look at a monthly on this one. Um, well, let's go to weekly, weekly, because I, I said, hey, during this period, Sedge was trading at you know about two fifty to three hundred pretty regularly, and that's from August twenty twenty all the way to to August twenty twenty three, three years of range bound, and so I bought in here at about two eighty, rode it all the way up to three forty one, I sold here. Did I do the right thing? I, I sold right there. Did I do the right thing? Absolutely. That was at 125. Look at where you are today. You're at 20. So the only one that's going to decide if you're right or not is you. And I think it depends on the company. If these were COVID flyers, if it was Zoom, if it was Etsy, if it's one of those, then yes, you did the right thing because coming back to the COVID levels of those types of stock uh, or mRNA or Pfizer, it, it's just not going to happen for a while. And there are better places for your money to work. That's why uh, reducing your losses and cutting them before they turn into bigger losses is always important. You know, what we, we can look at GCT, okay? GCT, Alpha Picks, which is a fantastic, fantastic portfolio. Alpha Picks is one. If you want Alpha Picks, we can go and look at it. Okay, on the link tree, it's the third link right here. Look at this performance, 139% versus 38%. GCT is a perfect example. They got out of this at around 15. Okay, they cut their losses at about the bottom. Since then, this stock is up to 27. I got out around 21. I didn't look back. Was it a, a good decision? I don't know. Again, I don't like the short sellers. It's a small, uh, it's a small cap. It doesn't fit my necessarily thing. And and when Seeking Alpha said, "Hey, we were getting out," I thought they were going to get out. I didn't know. I got out before them. But again, GCT is a great example of, "Hey, I was wrong to get out." It since has pumped. It's been pumping. I don't know if it's a short, uh, a short or what. Nvidia is another great example. 
So you don't know until the price actually does it, but getting out and not looking back is is never a bad thing. It's just a matter of where are you going to put your money? If you put your money into cash, that makes no sense. If the good if the business is a good business with good profits, with a good product and good management, you shouldn't get out when it goes down. Nvidia is a great example. Look at this slide from 2021 all the way to 2022, okay? Say you bought right here at $33 per share in uh, November 2021 at the peak. And you said, God, I just endured 68%. Maybe not. Yeah. I just endured 68% down during 11 months. Over a year, I'm down 68% from there. And I bought there. And and, and you said, I don't think it's going to come back, so I'm going to sell it. Well, you can always buy back as it starts to pump. You can always buy back as it starts to pump. I tend to not look back. I tend to just, you know, get rid of it. But Nvidia is a great example. If you bought at that one, you're doing great today. If you bought at 33 and you're at 90, you're at 124, you four times your money since 2021. That's fantastic. Another example, Meta. Again, a good company with good products, with good profits. And good management. And you can take a look at this one. Uh, Back when he was spending $10 billion. If you bought back here in September 2021 at 360, boy, you didn't feel good when it dipped down to 100 here in November 2022 when he was spending $10 billion for 30 people to go to the metaverse. You didn't feel good. Uh, But you could have sold at any point and you could have gotten back in. That's the key is when you see something like this and you see it sliding It's better to get out sooner than to hope and pray. Hope and pray is not a strategy. So if your friends think that a stock is going to come back and they start telling you, you should get out because it's going to come back. Why? Why? And the, the one thing you show them is the stock chart because the only thing that matters is price. And the only thing that will prove you right and them wrong is a continuing stock slide. The only thing that will prove them right and you wrong is the upper portion. But if it goes starts to go there, you can always get back in. You're just protecting yourself. Again, you want to make sure that you have, you know, Warren Buffett, we talked about it yesterday. He said, why would you buy your 20th stock in your portfolio? Why wouldn't you just add to your number one stock? Diversifying, you know, it doesn't help a lot of people. You can diversify in an ETF today. So I, again, I like I like that you're cutting your losers. Don't let people affect your decisions. You're the one in charge of your money. Don't let a douche, just like I say, don't let a douche on the internet affect you, you know, cause you to buy or sell a stock. Don't let your friends uh, affect you to buy or sell a stock. We all have different risk tolerances. If you're down 60% and you're down 80% and you want to sell, that's your decision. You can have somebody, you know, mock you all you want. And then show them the stock price or show them that you bought back in, that they were right and say, thank you. You know, it's not about there. There is no flex on this channel. There is no you don't see me, uh, you know, throwing up my my house, my car, uh, my, 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 you know, my portfolio. I don't take pictures of my portfolio. There's a reason I don't take pictures of my portfolio and post them. I don't want to flex because the reality of the situation is there are people out there with more than I have. There is no reason to flex. And and the only thing that matters in this stock market is price. If a stock has a reason to hold on to it, hold on to it. If a stock has no reason to hold on to it, don't hold on to it. You can always get back in. So I thought it was a great question. Thanks, Josh. Hopefully I answered it. From Diego. Uh, on Spotify, lots of recent ramblings on nuclear, especially with big tech interested as power source. What are your thoughts on OK, OLKO and RYCE? First off, let's go and look at this. Nuclear, I know nothing about. So this is literally like asking McDonald's. Uh, hey, what do you think of the um, OLKO? O-L-K- O-K-L-O? Uh, let's see if Oclo is it. O L K O. I read really, it. Is, is this the nuclear one? Let me see. Yeah. Uh, Diego, first off, check your symbols when you post them. Because if you can't post the symbol right, it's probably a shitty stock. Uh, 1.15, so it's a small cap. Uh, Oclo offers a play on advanced nuclear. We can look at it. Valuations B. 
profitability is an F. I mean, they're not making money. Uh, if we want to look at the valuation, they're, yeah, they're not making money. Uh, if you look at their financials, what did they pull in? There's no revenues. There's no revenues. Net income, $76 million. They're losing it. I mean, I, honestly, God, I would just trade it. What's the reason to, to hold this one? I mean, w- literally, what is the reason to hold this one? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look like they have any money. Earnings per share forward, minus $5.65. You look at Wall Street, I bet there's one person, four analysts that cover it, four. Average price target, 10. It's 10% upside. So it's up 3%. Trade it. Trade it. Just trade it. Uh, RYCE, this is, uh, I don't even see that one. RYCE, I don't see it. So my thoughts on it, trade them. I, I would stick with nuclear. I know nothing about nuclear. There's no way I would get into something that I don't know exactly everything. But okay, I'll, I don't see anything good. I mean, you'd have to tell me. Again, your elevator pitch. Diego, what is it? What's the elevator pitch on uh, uh, OKLO? Okay, other than, hey, it's done well short term. It, it, it's pumping short term. Because we can see year to date, it's down 7%. Six months, it's down 24%. One month, you're up 73%. Fantastic. Five days, you're up 17%. Trade it. Just fucking trade it. I mean, that again, you don't have to. Stocks are a Tinder date, not a marriage proposal. It's a Tinder date. That's what it is. So, okay, laced up. Oh, I said I'll add to it, uh, but I think nuclear is good. I do think nuclear is good. Uh, I wouldn't YOLO nuclear, though. I would probably go with, like, Constellation Energy. That's what I said, CEG. Uh, or or uh, some of the other names like Duke Energy, um, Georgia Southern, which is Southern Company. Uh, some of those names I would probably invest in. Uh, YOLOing nuclear, you could throw $5 into it and be happy. But trade trade that crap that's not making money. Laced up from Spotify. First, I want to say you're doing a great job. You're not talking too fast. Their listening skills are too slow. Kudos. Uh, I don't want to smoke. What's up with Boeing? Anything in the future showing they're going to climb back or just drop them? So I dropped them from um, from the core portfolio. Boeing, I, I talked about it just before. You want good companies with good products, with good management and good profits. This company has two missing. The good profits and they, have, uh, they don't have very good management. Until that management comes back, I just don't think that you want to hold this one. Now, is the valuation crazy? No, it's probably the best that it's been. But they're not making money. They still have, you know, unlike the other one, See, they're pulling in seventy-three million dollars of the trail, you know, for per year. They're pulling in a bunch of money. The actual market cap. This is still a Dow. I think it's still. It might have been pulled out of the Dow. I'm not sure. But it's market cap ninety-two billion. It's not a bad one. If you want to buy something and hold it, I would probably buy an ETF with uh with Boeing in it. You know, one of the indu- the the indus- I think X uh, XPI. I forget. One of the the sectors. Let's see. Uh, let's Google um, Spider Share uh, Industrial. What is it? XLI. XLI is the uh, XLI. Let's see what percentage Boeing is of XLI. Um, and XLI has done pretty well. I mean, it's it's not bad. It's up 062 percent. Let's see their holdings because I think Boeing will be a good amount. No, it's not even in the top ten. But that's what I would do. I would probably hold. It's in here. It's definitely in here. It's just not probably a top 10 holding. But again, this is 4%. It's 81 holdings. That's where I would probably go with Boeing. Should you get rid of Boeing? Ugh, that's your time frame. Again, everybody has different different risk tolerances. You're down 27% in one year. Year to date, you're down 41%. You can always get back in. I would rather see you buy at 170 during an uptrend than buy at 152 and try and time the bottom. That's just it. Uh, John from Instagram. My apologies, John. I deleted because he, uh, you know, he messaged me on my personal Instagram. Uh, it might have been a mistake, <laughs> but it might have also been uh, you're messaging me on my personal Instagram. But VRT. Uh, I deleted the screenshot. VRT, I think, is what he he has for. VRT is one that I personally own. I have. A, I wanted to add more to it. I added more to it. This is a thirty-eight billion dollar company, so it's a kind of a mid cap. Um, its valuation is absolutely crazy. This is in the AI space. Uh, Forty-seven is the the PE forty, and and we talk about why would you want to pay fifty for a Costco? Well, 
this is growing. You know, year over year, revenue growth, 12%. The sector's growing at 3%. It's an industrial. Um, you know, let, let me see the summary. Let's let's go and read the summary of what they do. Uh, together with designs, manufacturers, and services, critical di- digital infrastructure, technology, and life cycle for data centers, communication networks. It's basically like a um, SMCI kind of thing. Uh, where I think they do racks. The bulls say the combination of strong demand environment for critical data center infrastructure plus operating leverage should drive margins to peers that provide over 30% earnings growth. Uh, The bears say Vertiv continues to jump based on excitement over AI infrastructure demand and orders, but the company doesn't have the actual growth rates to warrant the excitement. That's what you're kind of guessing is, hey, do they have the forward growth rate? You know, you can look at the valuation, and if they continue the current growth rate, the peg ratio is only 0.8. So Wall Street says it's a strong strong buy. 14 analysts, that's average. Their average price target, 102. At 104, it makes sense to try and look at the chart because the 52-week range goes up to 109. So let's go look at the chart. VRT, are you trimming it? Are you buying more of it? Are you getting rid of it? I don't think you get rid of it. But I do think that 109 causes you to start trimming. And yes, I'm in at about 80, 80 or 90 bucks. But you just had a golden cross. If you, you know, you don't want to trim like, you know, uh, 50% of this. You want to trim like 10% right here. You know, it, again, it, it's up 1.6%. It's had a crazy good run. It, you know, their earnings are coming up here on October 22nd with a golden cross with earnings coming up. You may have the, 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 you know, push it higher. Again, there's only 14 analysts that cover this. So I, I, I think it's a good one. I hold it. I like it. I could, I'm, I'm talking my own book there. It's a little bit, but again, I, this is a trade. It, it, it's, it's, it's not one that I, I'm looking at long term at growing to be like 60% of my portfolio. It's just one that I found interesting uh, along with SMCI. I wanted to get into it. It's not a, a, an enormous buy. Just, know that it wasn't an enormous buy, but I do hold a small position in this one. Now let's talk about scans. One that showed up today is Palantir. Okay. When I talk about scans, it's my four hour algorithm. I scan stocks that look for an entry. Okay. You can see on Palantir, the entry here was at 34. Okay. Today it has another entry. It's not going to show because you're still in at 34. My algorithm makes you 133% on this name over 24 months. If you bought and held Palantir, you're up 407% over those 24 months. So my algorithm protects you from a downside, but it doesn't beat buy and hold. So you're really looking for entries. Now, because it gets an entry today, do I think you should buy it? The answer is no. Why do I say that? Well, let's take a look at a weekly chart first, okay? That yellow line is 25 That was the old resistance. When you go back here, okay, this one just IPO'd in 2020. When you go back and look at a weekly, the high that it got to was 45. That was January 25th, 2021. It was 45. Then you go over here to Seeking Alpha and and you say, okay, well, if can it go higher? Let's take a look. This is heavily covered by Wall Street. 19 analysts cover this one, okay? Their price target, $26. They haven't had a chance to, to, to chase this up. Okay, they will. Their earnings are coming out. I think it's next week or the week after. The thing that, that makes me nervous is we talked about uh, with Costco at 50 times future earnings. This is trading at 120, 110 times future earnings. 110 times future earnings. It's peg ratio going forward, which includes growth is 4.6 so this at some point again at some point valuation matters and 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 i say that fully knowing that this could be and i talked about it earlier this could be the tesla moment where valuation doesn't matter in this one it could be but do i want to take that chance and buy at 40 when the cap is 45 that's the all-time high and, and the analysts say it's worth 25. No, their earnings are coming up. It's going to pump. You know, CARP may say on the thing, hey, those beepers that you're holding, put them in, into a metal container while we're at this building because I'm here. Maybe they've developed some AI software that blows up beepers around him. Something crazy like that. You never know. Uh, SMCI. 
I pulled this one out of the core portfolio, but I am still holding this one. I think this one's interesting going into earnings. I think they report later in October. I think it's the last week in October, if I'm not mistaken. We'll wait for this one to come up. But SMCI is interesting because they have projected, they had their best quarter in history the last quarter that they reported. That is why you saw the stock pump a little bit during its last quarter. But since then, it has lost everything, okay? It has lost everything. Their margins, it pumped down here because of their margins. But again, it was their best quarter. The margins were down, came down a bunch of gaps, short report comes out, it goes down even further, okay? Entry here at 4154. You're trading at 4227 right now. This is right after their 10 for one stock split. That red line that you're seeing is an old, uh, old resistance line see how it resisted there it kind of just pumped up as it slid down what's it turned into support support here support here you could argue support here as it broke through and went back up uh, but i would be worried that this one's slipping again their earnings are coming up let's see october 30th that's going to be when you actually find out are the were they just pumping the stock are they going to release more data? Are they going to go back and do it? They haven't released the 10K, so it's interesting. Now, we've got Viking Therapeutics. Uh, we didn't talk about GLP-1, but we talked about it yesterday. Uh, GLP-1, this is a GLP-1 drug uh, company, and they get an entry here at 64. Do you want to remove, uh, do you want to uh, buy in here at 64? Let's take a look at the weekly chart. It's run quite a bit. It looks like it's just trading sideways, capitulating while the MACD resets and the MACD looks good on the weekly. So Viking Therapeutics at some point, you know, again, valuation matters, but Viking Therapeutics, we can look at it. Wall Street says it's a strong buy. What's their average price target? 109. That's 68% above. There's 13 analysts that cover this. They've chased it up and it is pulled back. This is the bio care. This is a biopharma. This is a company that is not making money. Okay. They are not making money. When you look at their financials, they don't have revenues. So you are betting on this company, but they are in trials for a GLP-1 drug. $7 billion market cap. It's a small cap. So again, it's on my watch list. It's one that looks interesting. Will I buy and hold this one? Probably not. Again, it's a GLP-1 market. If I want GLP-1, I'm going to go with somebody that's making money like Eli Lilly. So we'll have more. Uh, one that I wanted to look at before, and I typically don't buy before a weekend, but with um, with uh, Jensen Wong saying that in demand for uh, Blackwell is quote-unquote insane, it might make sense. Okay, We got an entry in here, uh, NVDL which is double daily leveraged ETF on NVIDIA. Again, it's a double leveraged ETF daily on NVIDIA. Now it got another entry. It got you in here at 52, okay? The average gain on this one, average win, 41%. You haven't made 41%. Let's see, maybe you have. Let's look at it. Uh, from 52, tell you about it, 52, you've made 11%. So the average gain is 41%. Now, over 22 months on this one, <laughs> uh, I'm going to blow your mind. You've made 987%. 987% with 16 positions. So it doesn't get you in. You win 56% of the time because we've been in a bull market in this one. It's an absolute bull market. Your average win, 41%. It might make sense to get into this one. Again, I think that NVIDIA, when he said he has earned that right, so until that, that comes back, it might make sense to get into this. You know, again, we only have two years of data. This just came out two years ago, but both Novembers were a hundred percent win. October, you had one out of two. Again, if, if, if seasonality makes sense to you, but it, uh, I'll have more. Uh, there's a Palantir Daily PTIR as well. If you have any questions, hit me up again. Everything's on the link tree. I would urge you sign up for TrendSpider, take the weekend, learn to learn charting. Uh, if you don't have, if you don't want to do TrendSpider, at the very least, get a chart program. And Webull has a great desktop software that's free that you can use that I used for a while. Uh, it's it's right here, the fourth link. You get free stocks when you put your money in. In fact, uh, I, I put a thousand dollars in there. What twenty twenty two somewhere in that neighborhood? I think I'm at. Um, let's see. 
86 85 86 85 so most of that today is by the way in ibit and nvidia so it's made some money but again you get free stocks there uh, alpha picks great portfolio of stocks we just got one on the first it's an electrical supply company i went over that if you want to see any of that stuff it's all in the newsletter it's all in the newsletter and i'll be doing another video course this weekend for subscribers so go and sign up for the newsletter uh, if you want Seeking Alpha Premium, we talked about how valuation, again, the five quant things, uh, setting up screeners, setting up your portfolio, all of that stuff, it is customizable. I love Seeking Alpha Premium. If you have any questions, hit me up. I will talk to you guys Monday. Have a great weekend. Every Bye. morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my and fears.